had the mid-generation upgrade where they went from the 6-liter motor to the 6.2. They went through the transmission, cut the shift times in half, they put a new steering box in it, and every year they're making little subtle adjustments and changes to suspension and stuff like that. I can, I can feel the difference just about every year from one car to the next. Little subtle stuff they've done. The engine is all aluminum, all alloy. With the exception heads block, with the exception of the intake manifold. This is a thermal plastic that was developed by BASF for BMW. And GM bought it for BMW to use starting on the C5. And they did that because they can better control the air fuel mixture and that material than they can in any kind of alloy or anything else. It just works better. Uh, it's, it's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission that has paddle shift capability. Uh, when you put the, the transmission in manual mode and you downshift it, it will tack the engine uh, off like rev matching that as you downshift. And it's just a smooth transition. It's extremely good, good setup. That's why it produces 430, 436 horsepower with dual mode exhaust. And we'll get 28 miles a gallon on the highway. It's got a tall rear end. Uh, and if you've uh, driven one at about 70 miles an hour, you turn it about 1,400 RPM. And that's where you get your fuel economy from. Uh, the bodies are all composite. They're not truly fiberglass. They haven't been in a long time. They've got fiberglass in them, but they're a mixture, a composite mixture. And uh, they've got uh, four-wheel independent suspension. Uh, the engine is in the front. The transmission's in the back. It's mounted to, to the uh, differential to the rear end housing, and that's for better weight balance, and that's with the manual and the automatic. With the manual, the clutch is up front attached to the back of the engine, but the transmission is still in the back. And uh, this, of course, is the Grand Sport, which is the old Z51 package uh, with heavier sway bars and springs and drilled rotors, and they took that package and wrapped a Z06 body around it with the flare defenders, the wider tires and wheels, the bigger brakes, and it's probably the smartest move they've made, you know, mid-generation in a long, long time. Uh, this car has the distinctive stripes on it. This is the actual 60th anniversary car. They've got 60th on every 2013 Corvette, but this is the actual package that only comes in this color. The stripes are optional but they're all white with a blue interior. Any questions about the powertrain? Can you order those stripes and put them on another car? You couldn't early on. I don't know if you can now or not, but you can't really take a car that doesn't have stripes on it and make it look like one of these cars if that option has been left off without a great deal of expense because the stripes continue across the roof, the top, mm -hmm. and you would have to replace the top as well. But when, you, when the, the package first came out, you couldn't get the stripes. I don't know if you can now or not. What about the transmission? What about the Is it sealed or? Transmission sealed. You don't check it at all. It's no big difference. Sealed for, for 100,000 miles. I don't know. <laughs> These 60 packages are, are uh, the, the equivalent to a 4LT. They've got the leather wrapped interior. They've got the, the Pull that embroidery on the dash. Like I said, this particular car, the 60th car, is the only car you can get with a blue interior. The dash is blue. Uh, it's just very unique, and, and that they intend it to be. The anniversary cars are usually unique in some way. This one, they kind of carried it uh, to the extreme because it is the last of the, of the, of the C6 line. Uh, they changed in 2012, they changed the seats. They went from the seat that you see in, in all the cars prior to that to this new seat for 12 and 13. It gives you more support uh, on, on your uh, on your uh, lats. It gives you more shoulder support. And, and to my opinion, it's a better looking design. And my customers tell me that this seat sits better, the base seat sits better than the uh, upgraded uh, sport seats in the 11s. It just seems to like it better. They changed the steering wheel also. They took the bright finish away on the spokes and replaced it with a black finish. You've got a Grand Sport logo in the center of the wheel. Uh, this car has in-dash navigation and, and, of course, all the standard features you'll find on, on one of these cars. It does not have <coughs> selective ride control, F55. 
which is a, uh, another option that you'll find on some of the cars, very few. We don't order it on the stock units because we don't necessarily think it's worth the additional cost. It's about sixteen dollars to $1,700. I had it on my 98. It was a three-possession setting then, I think. And I couldn't really tell any difference in how the car handled. Maybe it rode a little smoother on touring. I could hear the shocks react to the road surface on on uh, performance, but that, the car didn't handle any better. This car will do. You can't reach the capabilities of this car on the street. So it's, you know, it's just some people order because they want all the options. That's the reason we don't do it on our stock units. Any questions about that? The console race cars will hold two sets of golf clubs, depending, of course, on the size of the bag, right, Michael? That's it. <laughs> no tour bags. <laughs> That's right. The, uh, you've got little storage areas on either side. Now, on the manual transmission cars, your battery is going to be back here because all the manual transmission cars have a dry sump oil system, and the oil tank is sitting where the battery normally is under the hood. This is a, uh, a barrier for your power top here. Only the cars with power tops have it, and the power top will not operate unless this is in place. You can drop it down if you're going to go on a trip. Everybody knows that wife likes to pack perhaps a few things more than you think they need, but you can drop that down and have lots of room in the top, I mean in the trunk, but uh, you're not going to be able to operate your top. Most of the coupes have a Most of the coupes have a, uh, a automatic pull down on the uh, rear hatch. When, when you pull it, when you pull it down, it'll it'll grab it and automatically tighten it down. Convert, convertibles do not have that. This car does have the dual mode exhaust. You can tell the difference just by the size of the pipes. They're bigger. The interior pipe on each side has a butterfly valve in it <clears throat> that is open when you fire the car up. That's why it kind of barks up to many places at 3,000 RPM. On the hard acceleration, those butterfly valves open, and about 80% of the exhaust does not pass through the butler. That's where you pick up your additional six horsepower, and that's why the car gets loud. Uh, Darren has a, uh, a little kit that he'll put on the car for a customer for about $100 that lets you control that with a fob. If you want to show off the stoplight or something, you can open it up. Any questions about that? <laughs> I'll start it off. Okay. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> I guess I got to die. <laughs> start. That's all right. What they say is I got to Anybody have any questions? No. I don't, yeah, I, do. I don't understand that exhaust thing again. The dual exhaust again, it opens the wind. It opens, well, it, it's open when you start the car up because they're kind of spring loaded and then they close. That's why when you start the cars up, they'll get loud, then they get quiet. Basically, a lot of people go into a boiler or a Philly boat or one of the aftermarket tuners for, for a pet match exhaust when they bought a car to pick up more horsepower and make them loud, you know. So it's kind of like a loud sport car. So it's kind of like they will, will design something that will give them the benefit of that, but the car will be quiet and normal and cruising around town driving because some people might like to have the extra power, but they don't like the noise. So they developed that and started offering it as an option, what, three or four years ago? Uh, it's amazing that they answered all the people that go going after market for the Yeah, it's a, basically, it's a it's an RPM and throttle control.